I'm going to begin, Louis, by asking uh, just what came first. Was it the idea to do a film and then you said, right, now let's find a, a suitable kind of um, mm -hmm. uh, theme or something to explore? Or did you start thinking about Scientology and think, actually, this would make a great movie? Well, both is the short answer. I would wanted to do Scientology for years. I'd approached them to do a TV show in 2003 and even went out and had meetings with some of their PR people and then it fizzled out. I basically gave up on the idea. Then a producer called Simon Chin, who produced uh, two Oscar winning docs, came to me and said, have you ever thought about doing a film? And then he suggested Scientology. So in a sense, uh, it was, in a sense, the idea of Scientology had already been there, but it was only once we committed to a film that it felt like something we could do. I mean, the, the lack of access in this film is one of the key kind of themes in a sense mm. that it just sort of highlights how elusive they are and how little they're willing to give out to, to journalists. But as a documentary filmmaker, that must have been so immensely frustrating for you. Well, in actual fact, in an odd way, it was quite liberating, especially for me. And ha having worked with access in virtually everything I've done, um, it felt like I was, I was sort of exercising a new set of muscles. And more than that, you know, because I knew, I basically had made peace with the idea that they wouldn't let me in. And it wasn't just that, oh, they'll let other people in, but not me. They don't let journalists in full stop, you know, except for occasionally over the years, very limited little bits of access. And we knew if it's a 90 minute film, that wasn't going to be enough. So it was more a case of feeling that, oh, this is an opportunity to absolutely do something different and it will be exciting and we won't have to tie ourselves in knots about what we're allowed to do based on some access agreement. And I was wondering too, I mean, have you felt that, uh, I mean, the, the members of the Scientology Church have been known to, to have smear campaigns for people after mm -hmm. they've left and stuff like that. I'm just wondering over the last kind of year or two, have, have you felt at, at any point sort of that you might be being followed or there might be, you know, I don't know, in some way kind of infiltrating your life? Or have, is, I mean, it could be paranoia, but I mean, have you uh, ever felt anything like that? Well, while we were filming, we were followed, that's for sure, and also uh, filmed, and then and the contributors that we were speaking to who were ex-Scientologists were harassed and abused by active Scientologists. Since we finished, I'm not aware of having been followed, and I, so, so it's possible that it will all be, be quiet from now on. They did say while we were filming that they were filming me for a documentary they were making, so it may be that they're just waiting to finish their one and they're going to put their their documentary online. Mm. But I, um, you know, I hope it stays quiet. And, and do you think they actually are making this documentary? Do you think it could be put online? Have you seen I, any footage from it? I haven't seen anything. I just know that every time I met someone from Scientology, either outside a base or where we were filming, they would be filming me. Um, I think if they think they can put something together that makes me look bad, then they will do that. They have the resources and the manpower to do it. So uh, they may just be waiting for their moment. And they can be quite, I mean, particularly in the film, they can be quite daunting. I don't think Tom Cruise will be involved in no. making my docu <laughs> a documentary about me. But if he voiced it, that would be amazing. He could play you. Gosh, <laughs> you, yeah, in some of the reenactments. Yeah. Uh, talking of reenactments, um, uh, there's some brilliant ones in, in this movie, of course, and they almost had a touch of the act of killing about it. I was wondering if that was an inspiration to this at all. It was, funnily enough. I was I'd, The act of killing being, of course, uh, a documentary about uh, mass killings in Indonesia in the 60s where they, the, the, the killers themselves, who are now quite old and have never had to be held to account for what they did, reenact the, the murders and in the process sort of reveal something of their own psychology. When I saw that, uh, it made a huge impression on me and I, I felt that, w that, w that liberated me to think about a different way of seeing reenactments, seeing them as something free form and almost uh, therapeutic. And uh, when you um, when they they perceived you to be a sort of threat to, to their organisation, I mean they can be quite threatening, quite daunting. And I was just wondering, as a document as a documentary filmmaker, do you see danger as being beneficial to the project at hand in the past across your career? If you're in a situation that seems like you feel a bit kind of um, vulnerable, mm. I mean, do you feel quite scared and frightened in the moment? Or are you purely seeing it as this is going to be great TV? Well, it's both really, because mm. you're definitely aware that um, the moment, you know, the, 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 you know the, the documentary maker's biggest enemy is boredom, right? So when you're waiting for something to happen, that's bad. When it's kicking off and the film is, you know, you're filming 
and then you're thinking, oh, well, this is great, we're getting it. Having said that, you can also be afraid and stimulated, and so it's complicated. And as long as I'm not in imminent danger of physical harm, um, or excruciatingly embarrassed by something dreadful, um, then I'm usually all right. And I was wondering, when um, now you've kind of made this documentary, I mean, they didn't give you too much. Do you feel now that you you understand the Church of Scientology at all? Is it still still this big kind of mystery to no, you? No, I feel I do understand it. And I feel like filmmate, anyone who sees the film will get an insight into it. And that it's, 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 it's to, to a great extent, it's, it's about people with very honorable intentions, world saving, civilization salvaging intentions who feel they've got all the answers to the problems that have plagued mankind for millennia. Uh, the answers to uh, problems of mental health, famine, war, unkindness, lack of communication. And so they just, if you had all those answers, what would you not be willing to do in order to spread them and, 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 um, and preserve them? You know, if that, and that, that's, it's about the temptations of utopian and kind of messianic thinking and the way in which it can lead to all sorts of abuse. It's very quickly, might you sort of revisit them one day as you have done in the past with other topics, do you think? Would I revisit? There's many stories that you could tell about Scientology. Um, in the future, you never know. William, well, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you. Been a pleasure. pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!